Today we're going to be expanding on our analog clock control by implementing a dependency property. Now what is a dependency property and why would I use it? Well a dependency property is basically a property for XAML components such as our analog clock. XAML controls they get dependency properties and what these properties allow you to do is all kinds of WPF things like data binding, animations, validation and callbacks, styling. Like without these properties you're not going to be able to do any of that if you just decide to use plain old C sharp properties on your controls. You're not going to be able to use any of those features in WPF. So it's kind of the standard to use dependency properties when you're dealing with any kind of XAML or WPF. So back to our analog clock, let's take a look at where we left off last episode. We have this clock and we have, here's three of them right here, they just have the second hand going around and around. Now what our dependency property is going to do is we're going to be able to control whether the second hand is showing. And I have this test project here where I've actually already implemented it because I want to show you guys what we're working towards. And we're going to have this property show seconds and we'll be able to set it to false. So now the first clock that we have here does not have a second hand. So a pretty simple dependency property here. I want to keep it simple just to show you guys the ropes a little bit. So now that we have that, let's move into our main project and implement this thing and show you guys what we need to do. So the first thing we want to do is actually register the dependency property with our analog clock. And that's going to be through a static instance here, a static variable. So public static dependency property. And we're just going to name it the name of the property followed by the word property. That's kind of the convention here. So show seconds property. And then we want to register it with the analog clock control because that's the name of the control that's going to own this property. So dependency property dot register the name of the property, we're going to name it show seconds, of course. The type of the property, it's going to be a boolean because it can either be true or false, of course. And the type of this control, so an analog clock. And another thing you can actually do, this is another reason why you probably want to use a, a dependency property over any other kind of property or over a C sharp properties, you can give it metadata right off the bat in this register. So, we're going to say new property metadata, and there's tons of things you can do with this. You can have validation callbacks, all those things. There's framework property metadata that, that controls when an object or a control is redrawn, all kinds of fancy things you can do with that, but we're going to keep it simple for now and just give it a default value. So, that's the first parameter of this constructor, and we're going to actually say it's true by default. So now that we have that, we need a property on our analog clock that hooks up to this show seconds property so that we can get and set get and set a value for each instance of analog clocks. And it's gonna start off looking like a regular C sharp property. And we're gonna call it the show. We're just gonna call it show seconds, of course, because that's the name of our property. And the getter for this is actually gonna get the value from this static show seconds property. So we're going to use get value. That's a regular method that's on every single dependency object. So control is a dependency object. And we're going to get the value of the show seconds property on our analog clock instance. And of course, we need to return it. And we even have to cast it to a boolean, which is safe, because we know it is a boolean. And then for setting, we use the set value that is on our control. And of course, we're setting the show seconds property to our value that's passed into the setter. And just like that, we now have our dependency property set up but it doesn't actually 
do anything. And what we're going to have to do is tie it up to our second hand when this template is applied. And there's many ways to do this. I'm going to show you the first way. So we have our second hand. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a binding for the second hand. But we're going to do it in code. So we're going to call this the binding, not binding group. Uh, we'll call it the show second, show seconds, show, show second hand binding. Naming is so hard. Just name it whatever you want, okay? <laughs> Equals new binding. And we're going to have to actually import some stuff here. Just give it a control dot. And the path to the binding is going to be new property path. And you give it a string to the path. We're going for the show seconds property, so you can do show seconds. Or if you actually want this to be strongly typed, you can do name of show seconds. So whenever you change this property for some odd reason, it'll actually change it. Or it'll actually throw a compilation error down here where if it's a string you'll never know and then the source for this is going to be this and we're going to have to use a converter here and it's going to be a boolean to visibility converter so what that means is haven't done any episodes on converters but if you're familiar with them in this case it's going to get a boolean so if our show seconds is true then this binding will return a value of visible. If our show seconds is false, it'll return a value of collapsed. And whatever is whatever could, whatever uh, control has this binding attached to it will not be shown. So now that we have this binding, we're going to add it to the second hand. Set binding. In this case, we're dealing with the visibility property of the second hand. And we'll give it the binding. So now that we have that, let's go into our main win window here. And if we type show seconds, the property does appear. And we're going to set this to false. And now let's run our application. And as you can see, the second hand is not on this object, or not on this clock. So that's one way that you can implement this binding, but there's actually an easier way. So I'm going to comment this out. And let's go into our style. And what we can do is use a template binding. So we have this visibility and what we want to do is template binding to this show seconds property. And of course we're still going to need our converter and to do that, let's bring in that converter. So we're going to need control template.resources. And we should be able to do Boolean the visibility converter. And we'll give it a key so that we can actually use it. And static, the converter is going to be this converter. And now, let's go back here. We're not doing any of this binding here, but if we run the application, the show second hand still, the second hand still is not shown. And with template binding, what it does is it allows our, our control template here to look at the properties on the control of whatever that template is being applied to. So this on apply template, well the template that we're applying is 
this is this template we have here so all of the properties that are on here can be accessed from inside of this template so that's gonna do it for this tutorial I hope you guys learned a little bit about dependency properties how to set them up we did a little bit of binding in code that was cool and then of course template binding very useful a lot cleaner than making a binding in code behind but yeah for dependency properties just set them up do some kind of binding with them make them useful and that's pretty much it thank you guys for watching and be sure to leave a like subscribe and stay tuned for more thank you